Hi, and welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, a cryptocurrency and blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. <laughs> There's going to be drinking. <laughs> There's going to be smoking. <laughs> There's going to be swearing. <laughs> You've been born. So look, look, here I come. In three, look, two, look, one. Bang! Welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. Welcome. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News. You are now about to witness with your very own eyes. The great show on earth. Look! Greatest show in the multiverse. Bang! Greatest dag on show the dag on multiverse. Bang! We have a great show for you today. All right, everybody. Look, look. All right, yeah, yeah, I know. It was only a couple days ago I did one. Yeah, well, I just, I don't know, I'm just in the mood to do one, so let's do it. All right, so we're going to talk about, so we're going to be back to normal, kind of how the old, in, the old day shows were, you know, not such big macro stuff. We're just kind of actually just going to talk about a couple of onboardings and shit here. So Polygon, we're going to talk about Polygon's D-Pin. I'm reading this because one of the brothers, he's into D-Pin, D-Pin, so all right. Well, Polygon has a D pin coordinator we're gonna read about that and then grayscale ah so here we go investment vehicles and that's another reason i want to do this show because i want to talk about this uh investment vehicles what have i been telling you you know we need investment vehicles that's what i've been teaching you and so grayscale these are tiny vehicles but it's something grayscale is opening trusts for near protocol and stacks bang that's what we need that's what we need not just Right, not just the Bitcoin and Ethereum, but now let's get into some altcoins, blah, blah, blah. And it'll all come, but. So this is great. And then this is just an interesting, uh, this is another house uh, here in the American Congress. The house passed an anti something something act. What is it? Anyway, some anti something act uh, regarding CBDCs. And one of the brothers, when I, when I first started this channel back in the days, this brother, Justin Williams, he said something to me about CBDCs, and it always stuck in my mind the way he said it. And so I'm going to explain what he said back, you know, uh, when, I do the, when I do that story. So, and then, you know, obviously, shout out to Anne Daily Summary as per usual. So, bang, let us proceed how we proceed with the middle. <laughs> bang. And then we head on over here and we do a little bit of. <laughs> oh, fuck, I forgot to tell you and open it. <laughs> All right, hold on. We head on over here, we do a little bit of. <laughs> Bang, there we go, there we go. Coin market cap dag on. Forgot to open it. All right. All right. So price of Bitcoin is $68,401. Oh, well, sixty-eight thousand four hundred twenty-six dollars now since I said that. $68,426. When I left you last time, we were at $67,579. So we have gone up. Um, what have we done here? Uh, nine hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Nine hundred fifty-seven dollars off. Bang, we're rich. Okay, so obviously there's nothing that changed in the macro from the show a couple days ago till today. Um, I will say this: notice your V Thor's for V Chain hodlers. Uh, you know you collect those VTHOs just for having V Chain, right? And so, bang, those skyrocketed today. Actually, I'll show you. Yeah, let's actually just show you guys. Watch this. Look what happened to VTHOs today. One of the brothers was like, VTHO, damn. I was like, dang out. Okay, check this out. Bang, bang. Look, look. The V4 tokens, right? Look at this. Oh, it went, right? It's 15% up just today. So, bang, in the past 24 hours. All right, we don't need to look at the charts. You get it. Just want to show you guys that one. All right. So talking about the macro. So nothing's changed since obviously last show, which was just 48 hours ago. Um, but your fee doors went up. Um, everything else is down. Um, the markets are down. Um, so I guess this week's big news. Let's talk about the week coming up then. Since this is a Sunday, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm do taping this on Sunday afternoon at 5.53 in the afternoon, um, in the evening. Um, this week's big news is on Friday, PCE. That's the, another, um, gauge of inflation in America, right? So that's a big, big deal in terms of, um, 
will we get a, you know, about in terms of where we stand with keeping, lowering, or raising interest rates? So Friday. <coughs> well, excuse me. <coughs> well, inhaled a little bit much there. All right, so Friday. But other than that, there's not really talk about. So let's proceed how we usually proceed. Top, holy, I got to get a sip after that. on all right top 10 of the day brothers and sisters you know who they are the usual suspects top 10 bitcoin ethereum tether bnb solana usdc xrp dogecoin toncoin and cardano holding on the number 10 and toncoin pushing its way up into the number nine into the top 10 all right let's look at market moves today single digits up single digits down some moron told me oh v chain went up because of something that some politicians said yesterday, yeah, well, the rest of the market tanked. So, settle down, fuck stick. You know who you are, moron. All right, single this up, single this down. Single this up, single this down. Meme coins hanging in there, Pepe up 6%. Single this up, single this down. Oh, shit, there's a spider on my wall. One second, one second. All right, all right, sorry about that. It's a little fuck stick, yeah. All right, uh, single this up, single this down. It would annoy me, like if I let him cross the whole wall while I'm talking, I would have been so pissed. <laughs> I wouldn't have been fun doing this show, so I had to just get rid of the issue. All right, single this up, single this down, single this up, single this down, single this up, single this down. Single this up to single this down to single digits up to single digits down. All right, let's see who lost money today. If you see anything here, you're like, go get it. Look, look, because it is on sale. See what it is. Bang. Whoops, sorry, sorry. I banged it too much. Bang, there we go. Woo, look at these games. Look at these games. Well, these are some serious games. All right, top 10 gainers. Jasmine Coin, Ethereum Name Service, uh, Lindo DAO, Pepe, Beam, Ave, uh, Ondo, Ordi, and Celestia holding on the number 10. Let's see who lost money today. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's what I was supposed to show you who lost. Sorry. I did it backwards there. Okay, this is who made money today. All right, the gains. But I usually do the losses first and then the gains later. All right, so now let's do the losses. Who lost money today? If you see anything on here you like, get it because it is on sale. All right. Sorry there. I, I don't know why I got confused like that. All right, top 10 losers. Core. Uh, AIOS Network, Chili's, Near Protocol, Fitted Network, Jupiter, Immutable, Tezos, Conflux, and Worldcoin holding on to it. Now, I told you we're going to start looking at volume, so let's look at the top 10 in volume today. In other words, this is where the money was. This is where people played. And I told you we're not going to count um, any stable coins. So, top two, Bitcoin number one, uh, Ethereum number two. Ethereum was number one the other day when I did the show, right? Uh, Solana holding on the number three, Pepe the number four, Dogecoin number five, Dogwhiff Hat, <laughs> number six, Arbitrum number seven, XRP number eight, Uniswap number nine, Near Protocol number 10. All right, good. So let us look at uh, total market cap. All right, total market cap is $2.55 trillion. And when I left you last time, we were at Oh, $2.54 trillion. So we've gone up 0. Point, or sorry, sorry, 0. 0.01 trillion dollars. Let's see, 24 hour volume. No, oh, son of a bitch. All right. So you know what volume means? Volume means activity. Doesn't mean buying, doesn't mean selling. It means both. Just people in here. This is how much money flowed through a market that day. You guys know me. Uh, anything under 100 billion is pocket change and this is some serious pocket change and so here we go um 24 or sorry um uh yeah 24 hour volume is 57.61 billion dollars fuck when i left you last time we were at 138.18 billion dollars we have gone way down um how much is this uh, let me do the 
math here. Let me math. About $81 billion. We've gone down $81 billion in volume. But, I mean, look, it's the weekend. And actually, especially here in America, it's Memorial Weekend. So that's to be expected. Let's see how we kick off on Monday. Or, sorry, sorry, Tuesday. Well, let's just see how we kick off on Monday. But here in America, Monday's a day off. So that means institutional money won't be flowing tomorrow. So tomorrow's Monday. Um, there won't be any institutional money tomorrow. But, you know, the retailers might still fuck around a little bit or whatever. But All right, so but Europe and everyone's still open tomorrow. So no problem. Asia markets, London markets, still open. All right, let's get to the stories. <clears throat> Bang! Come on. Give it. There we go. Bang! Polygon powered D pin coordination. Witness chain and eigen, eigen layer. AVS lead the way. Mm. So I've been hearing a lot about this D pin thing. Decentralized physical something something, I think it's called. If I'm wrong, just tell me in the comments. Put it in the comments what deep pin means, but I something to do with physical something. Maybe physical infrastructure something or something. <laughs> Anyways, though, it's gonna be a big deal. <clears throat> and uh well, Polygon's gonna do this. I'll be part of it. Or I guess you could say offer that service. Okay. So let's check it out. Look, look, Polygon L2 has linked up with Witness Chain to boost D-pin coordination layer. With its CDK engine, Polygon is looking to drive real-world use cases. Indeed. So this is probably a bunch of nerd talk, so I hope you guys understand it. You know me, I don't understand the nerd talk too much. Polygon blockchain, known for solving scalability issues, has announced an integration with Witness Chain, an eigenlayer AVS, to unlock a unified future for D-pin coordination. At the heart of this integration lies the use of Polygon's Chain Development Kit, CDK, to facilitate the D-pin coordination layer of the DCL. Why witness chain for Polygon Power D-pin coordination? As revealed in a series of posts on social media X, the witness chain zero knowledge layer two will establish a consensus and verification protocol for the physical state of D-pins. The vision of the DCL brings to life a scenario where resources seamlessly flow across various D-PIN networks. This opens the door for the development of next-generation decentralized applications, distributed apps, uh, designed specifically for the D-PIN ecosystem. All right. So this is in addition to securing a connection of the, <coughs> excuse me, of <coughs> to the ag layer to unify D-PIN economies on Ethereum. This connections allow the DCL to go beyond its individual D pin networks. All right, so it sounds like, yeah, so this is going to allow it to talk amongst maybe a few blockchains or something. So as a result, D pin communities can now share value, bootstrap infrastructure, and access a wide range of tools. This simplifies D pin onboarding and unlocks the power of interconnected DeFi and D pin ecosystems, capturing value from a much larger pool. So typically, D pins enable anonymous, real time interactions inside physical infrastructures. Excuse me, through technologies like smart contract and IoT. It aims to increase system responsiveness and adaptability excuse me, to human demands. As regards Polymon's, Polygon's recent integration, Witness Chain acts as a bridge, allowing DPINs to connect, share resources, and build a thriving economic continent. This ensures fast transaction processing without compromising on security, a crucial element for any large-scale D-PIN collaboration. Developers gain access to a richer pool of functions. Okay, okay, man, holy fuck. It sounds like I'm reading a commercial here. What the hell's going on? We're gonna skip this. Okay, fuck this. This is just basically reading a commercial. I'm not here to read some fucking commercial for these people. But anyways, I just wanted to show you that. Bang! Polygon. Uh, so this is a partnership, right? It's not an onboarding, right? Usually I don't read partnerships, but... Whatever, I needed to fill another space in the... <laughs> I like to do three stories, I only had two. So I just grabbed up this one. So, but Polygon Hodlers, bang, look at you in the deep end. All right, let's get on with what I really want to talk about. Bang, Grayscale. Come on, give me the bang. There we are. There we are. Grayscale unveils crypto trusts for stacks in near. And this is what I've been talking about. 
well, especially last show. If you watch last show, you'll see I preached to you. I showed you the importance of investment vehicles, investment vehicles, investment vehicles. In order to get the big money, the institutional money, we have to have investment vehicles. Institutions do not just buy Bitcoins. You know, they're not just going to buy Ethereum. They, they don't do that. Uh, personally, I'm surprised they're even just buying these ETFs because they're not even leveraged. But most, you know, most hedge funds, most institutions, they buy leveraged products. All right, people ask me, Shamari, you're a Forex trader. Fuck, man, how do you make so much money, man? I mean, the dollar only went up one penny yesterday. Yeah. And I tell them, look, look, dog. That's the voodoo. Just a little. Look, look. Just a little, a little voodoo. That's the voodoo of the markets, the magic of the markets. It's called leverage. <laughs> it's called leverage. How do you make so much, Shamari? Look, dog. That's that voodoo, dog. That's that voodoo. <laughs> yeah, it's voodoo. But anyways, that's how it goes. And so um, that's what hedge funds... Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So that's what hedge funds mostly um, will mess with, will fuck with. But... Um, even just things like this, as you saw, many institutions have bought the Bloomberg, um, sorry, sorry, not Bloomberg, uh, BlackRock ETF, Bitcoin ETF, right? That's how hungry they are. They don't even care that it's not leveraged. They're like, fine, man, just let me use it to get my clients in, right? And so this is what you need. You need investment vehicles, right? I showed you last week or, you know, the last show. Here's a Microsoft share. You can buy a Microsoft share by buying it. You can buy it in a futures contract. You could buy it in an options contract. You could buy it in a fund. Now, blah, blah, blah. You could buy it different ways, right? Those are the vehicles in which to expose your portfolio to the underlying asset of the Microsoft shares, right? Well, the Microsoft Corporation through its shares, right? <clears throat> and so here's an example. Grayscale unveiling uh, these crypto trusts here. So... Um, uh, this is what's needed. This is what's needed. So these guys are starting with Stacks and Near. That's their choice, okay? For whatever reason. And I'll tell you right now, personally, I know a lot of people, all these crypto bros, <laughs> morons, crypto bros are saying like, yeah, next ETF Solana, Next ETF XRP. <laughs> nah, trust me. Trust me. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I don't see anyone making a, an ETF out of a company that's in court against the SEC right now, Ripple. And I mean, Solana is popular. It is famous. But I mean, I don't know if someone would want to have their name to that when it's just a rug pull central. You know, think about all the people that have been ripped off by buying tokens on the on the Solana blockchain, right? All these meme coins and shit that just did that. Fuck, it almost happened to me. I almost bought this fake gaming token, man. In fact, no, I, I didn't almost buy it. I did buy it. But then we, a bunch of us, me, me and a bunch of guys. And then we found out it was bullshit and we got out. But actually, it was pretty funny. It ended up being a scam. But actually, it was the only thing that made money that week on my portfolio. <laughs> so it was kind of nice. I, I, I reverse rug to that fucker. Anyway, though, but so this is what's necessary. This is what's necessary. Sorry, get off into personal shit there. This is what's necessary. We need investment vehicles for our altcoins now. And so let's check out these guys. Let's check out this. <coughs> so despite Chair Gary Gensler, SEC Chair Gary Gensler's belief, that most cryptocurrencies are securities, Grayscale Investments continues to launch new digital asset investment products. Grayscale has introduced two new standalone crypto trusts. Whoops, sorry guys. Two standalone crypto trusts. Shit, sorry, hold on. What the fuck? Hold on, sorry guys. What the hell's going on? I can't control my daggone thing. Hold on a second. All right. Sorry, sorry. All right. Uh, despite Gary Gensler, blah, 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 blah. Grayscale has introduced two new standalone crypto trusts. 
providing limited exposure to Bitcoin Layer 2 networks, stacks, and altcoin blockchain near protocol. <clears throat> In a Thursday press statement, Grayscale's head of product and research, uh, Rahanesh Sharif Askari, explain that the creation of these trusts is in response to the growing demand for diversified crypto asset vehicles. Bang! That's what I said. Look! Bang! Look! Look! This is what I'm talking about. Diverse investment vehicles. Not just any vehicles, but crypto asset investment vehicles. Bang! That's what you need. You need the vehicles. Soccer mom and dad, they buy this shit vanilla. Like you and me. Buy vanilla, put it on a ledger, Total. Yeah, masters don't do that. Right? Hedge fund guys, asset managers, that they don't do that. Uh, they buy already pre made vehicles, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, they buy it on behalf of their clients, right? They don't just buy the thing, right? No, no hedge fund out there just buys Microsoft shares for their clients. No, they buy like puts you know, options contracts, puts on Microsoft or calls on Microsoft. You know, they buy leveraged futures contracts on Microsoft, you know. They don't just fucking buy Microsoft shares. Where's the money in that for the, they don't make any money doing that. So, um, well, I mean, they make money from the fees of the customers still, but I mean, you know, you know, uh, people don't do that. You know, if your customer wanted to just buy Microsoft, they just do it themselves. The reason you have an asset manager do it, yeah, it's because they have access to leveraged. Right, if you're at home and you want Microsoft shares, all right, you fire up your TD Ameritrade account, a Charles Schwab account, whatever you guys have there in Europe or Britain or whatever, banks let you guys trade from home, and you buy it yourself. Yeah, but I open up a, an account with, you know, a hedge fund or something, or some sort of investment manager, yeah, who can get me into leveraged, Right, I can already buy Microsoft myself, but I can't buy it leveraged, right? You know, like that, right? And so that's why they do that. And so, all right, so that's how that works. And so that's what we need, more uh, diverse, uh, diversified, right? See what it says, diversified crypto, right? It's not diversified right now. It's all just Bitcoin and Ethereum. Yes, in Europe, I know, I know. In Europe, they do have the ETPs made out of some altcoins, but... Obviously, those ain't doing shit. You, know, you don't even hear it. You hear when they get made after that, like whatever. So we need we need them and we need them to get big and, and, and big. <laughs> big and big. Big and juicy. All right. So that's what we need, right? More investment vehicles. So by creating distinctive solutions to address blockchain scalability challenges, Stacks and Near are poised to help foster greater adoption. Blah, 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 blah. And that's it for that, I guess. So I guess here now we talk about Grayscale's spot Ethereum ETF play. Meanwhile, Grayscale is expanding its crypto suite simultaneously with efforts to list a spot Ethereum ETF following the successful conversion of its GBTC product from a trust to an exchange traded fund. Right. And so remember that. <clears throat> remember when BlackRock and them got approved. And remember Grayscale was selling all those billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, right? Or sorry, sorry, right, because a lot of people left that trust, right, because they wanted into the Bitcoin. Sorry, it wasn't a trust. It wasn't a trust. How did it work? Right, their trust was an ETF, right. And so a lot of people sold out of that and then bought into the BlackRock one, right, and the Fidelity ones and the other miscreant ones there as well, right? And so um, that's what they're talking about here. It, they converted it into a proper, proper ETF, right? So odds of a U.S. SEC approval for the application improved in recent days, and observers are optimistic about its success. Several prospective issuers have submitted amended filings in their 19B-4 forms. Actually, and they got approved. I read it to you. Those were already approved, so maybe this story is about one day late. <clears throat> Bloomberg's Eric Balkunis, so that's the guy that I listen to for all my ETF news. He's the ETF Masna in our chat room. Bloomberg's Eric Balkunis highlighted that recent developments indicate progress with spot Ethereum ETFs and a willingness for the SEC, from the SEC to consider the products, despite political tailwinds. However, the Commission's classification of Ethereum remains a bone of contention. All for crypto nerds. Like I told you, I don't give a fuck whether they 
they classify shit as a commodity, a security, or just as property, like is in a piece of real estate. It doesn't matter to us. It doesn't matter to us. All that matters is that it gets regulated as something, and then people can start making investment vehicles for them, and that will bring in the institutional money that we need, right? Soccer mom and dad are tapped out. There's not enough money here. They don't have enough money left. They've been burned a couple times, rug pulled, just, right? <laughs> you know, mm-mm. unless you're like a real true believer of crypto, uh, you're shaken out of the market. You know, what's called, you know, in my world, we have what's called weak hands, right? They're called weak hands. In other words, these are people who invest, but they don't really have conviction, right? You know, when you invest in something, you should have a story about why you invest, right? Like that's when you're talking to a Mazdaq, he has a story about why he's investing, right? Like if you ask me, all right, Shamari, you know, why are you invested in Singularity? Well, well, it's run by a PhD. He's got a walking, talking, thinking robot, blah, 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 right? There's a story behind it, right? It's not just, well, it sounds good on its own. There's a story. And I think AI is the future. I think eventually it would be nice or it will be something to have walking, talking robots amongst humans, right? Like that's the picture. I, th- I think so, right? That's the story behind that investment, right? Shamari, why do you invest in VeChain? Well, sustainability, you know, that's a big deal around the globe, you know, especially the, the European Union. It's going to be sustainable, I guess, by 2030 or some shit. Like these are big deals. China is getting sustainable and everything. So a thing like that, which tracks things is good, right? It helps supply chains as well, right? And so there's a story behind why you invest in what you invest in, right? And it doesn't matter to me. So now let's get back to the issue at hand. It doesn't matter to me whether you call my, my V chains or singularity nets uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, securities, stocks, or commodities, or even like you can call it property. I remember we read one country, I think in Singapore, I think, I think, I think, I might be wrong. So if I'm wrong, put it in the comments and correct me, please. I'm not perfect, but I think Singapore um, classifies some cryptos as property. Yeah, like real estate, just like real estate. Yeah, which actually would be amazing because you don't have to pay property taxes on it every year, right? Whereas if it's, if it's, if it's classified as a security, you'll have to pay, well, a security or a commodity, you're going to have to pay capital gains on it, right? So it doesn't really matter <clears throat> what they classify crypto as. As long as we get the vehicles, that's all we need. That's all we need. That's, that's what we fucking need, right? Investment vehicles. Classify what you want. And personally, I think there are securities. Well, whatever. So for this reason... Issuers removed all staking language from filings and a 25% chance of of rejection still exists. The Wall Street cop on the beat is scheduled to to issue its final decision on two bids before week's end. Oh, so this is a, uh, this is an old article here. All right, so let's just move on then because we already know the, the, um, The SEC did approve the uh, 19 um, B-4s. All right, so anyway, so, but like, let's just get back to what we're talking about. New crypto trusts, bang. And that's an investment vehicle and that's what's needed, more and more of these. And they're gonna come, don't worry, I mean. But just when, how long, right? Like here in America, you can't really do them yet. And that's why this right here, Grayscale is kind of pushing the envelope. (laughs) You know, they're kind of pushing the envelope. They might get in trouble for this, but maybe not, right? So it's better to, what do they say? It's better, how does it, the saying goes, right? Like it's, it's better to be scolded than ask permission, right? Like it's better to just do something and be scolded than ask permission to do it and you're told, no, you can't, right? Just do it. And if you get in a little bit of trouble, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know I couldn't do that, right? <laughs> I can't remember the saying, right? If, you know, if anyone knows the saying, put it in the comments, right? It's better to be scolded than ask for permission, I think is how it goes. In other words, just do what you want to do. And then if you get scolded, all right, well, fine. You know? 
Who cares? I tried, right? You tried. All right, so there we go. We need new investment vehicles, and here is one. All right. Okay, so this one, I'm not going to read this one, actually. Um, this is another one. I am going to read the CBDC one, though, because one of our brothers told us something interesting and actually made my mind go, wow. So CBDC, so U.S. House passes Tom Emmer's CBDC Anti-Surveillance Act. So I want to get really serious about something. Guess who came out in the world, in the, the first in the world for CBDCs? China, right? Because with CBDCs, a central bank digital currency, you can track what people are doing with the money, right? Like you people, a lot of people in crypto, you know, oh, we want privacy, we want privacy. If you do anything digital, people know what you're doing. You know, crypto people are kind of really crazy to me, like, they, they say, like, yeah, we want privacy, blah, blah, blah. What privacy, motherfucker? At your bank, like, so say, for instance, your bank, right? If you're a crypto person, if you have a bank account, right? Well, the only way I can see what you're doing in your bank account is if I go get a search warrant, right? I have to go to a judge, tell the judge I think you're doing crime. If the judge believes me, I can get a search warrant, and I can search your bank and get all the records of your bank account. Yeah, well, in crypto, I don't need a search warrant. I could just go to the block explorer and look at everything you've done, who you've passed money to. Anyone can. <clears throat> it's actually the most unsecure. Uh, it's the most unprivate way, right? Not even the cops. I don't give a fuck what crime you've done. Here in America, anyway, the cops need a search warrant to give to the bank for the bank to get your, to give your, you know, your details. Yeah, well, I can go on a block explorer and find out your details, right? How do you think we know when blah, 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 this whale moved money here or that whale there, right? We know. And we know who they are mostly, right? And let's get real, when you're the FBI or something, you can connect addresses to wallets and, I mean, um, you know, to IP addresses and blah, 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 other ways. So it always makes, it always makes me laugh when crypto people talk about crypto as it's a privacy thing. No, it's the most unprivate. I don't need a search warrant to go block explore and see what you've done, right? See how much money you've moved around, do I? Hey, man, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, well, of course, of course. That's what makes me a master. I think about shit like this, right? Like, wait a minute. The cops need a warrant to look at my, my banking records. They sure don't need a warrant to check out how many V-chains I have, <laughs> right? If they know the address I got. All right, so... And then and, and I, I'll also just put it this way, right? The only secure transactions on earth are with cash, with fiat. I fucking hate fiat. Fiat sucks, really. It's the only private thing you, you got. It's the only private means of purchasing goods or services on earth, right? Every time you swipe your debit card, your credit card, well, it's tracked. Literally the time, the date, exactly what you bought, everything. Yeah, with cash it isn't, all right? And I, I'll use my favorite example. When I go to the weed man and I'm like, look, dog, let me just get a half ounce of that and a half ounce of that and just let me just, just charge me for a full ounce. Yeah, well, I give him cash. Yeah, here's 175 bucks, boom. I get a half ounce of sour diesel, the, the earth version, not the, not the multiverse version. Not the Robbie Hardaway version, but the, the Earth version. And then, you know, another half ounce of, uh, you know, whatever, you know. Fruit bubble gum or whatever. Something, whatever it's called, you know. AK-47 or something, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, and I pay him cash. Yeah, nobody knows I bought this. Unless he tells somebody, yo, man, Shamari just bought a bunch of weed off me. Or unless I tell someone, yo, man, I just bought a bunch of weed off that guy. No one knows the transaction, do they? It's cash. Cash is your only privacy. So it's pretty funny when crypto people are like, we want privacy and we hate fiat. <laughs> Idiot. That is the only private. I literally don't even need a search warrant to look at your daggone crypto hodlings. All right. Do you guys understand? And I know it's probably blowing some of your minds right now. Like, fuck, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, dick. Well, 
a, a wallet address connected to a Mac, a Mac address, right? The Mac address is the address of your computer, not an IP address, which is the address of your computer where it's coming out onto the internet, but your Mac address is the address of your computer, capital M, capital A, capital C, Google Mac address. Yeah, well, once I know the Mac address of your device, all right, well, I know exactly what you're doing. I can follow it. Yes, yes. Okay, so, but why are we talking about that? Oh, and the reason I talk to you about that now is what this guy told me. What one of the brothers told me, his name is J. Will, Justin Williams. He's a computer programmer. So, yeah, so, well, so, what he, what I'm about to tell you makes sense coming from a guy like him and a guy like him I listen to because, well, he knows some shit. I mean, I know how to program computers too, but he does it for a living, so, you know, it's a whole other level. <laughs> He's actual real... You know, that's his job. So he told me something one day. We have a chat room, and he told some of the brothers one day, he said, yeah, CBDCs can be dangerous because, you know, this privacy thing. That's why I went on the whole privacy tip. Because he said, well, CBDCs, they're all individual, right? And your government could actually turn off your money. Yeah, like if your government, if you're, if you're a person, say Shamari, me, right? And I'm getting all angry about something. And I'm fucking, fuck this guy. Fuck the prime minister. Fuck the president. And they don't like what I'm saying. Beeps. They could turn off my money. My CBDC. Right? Because it would, it would be known that I own it. Right? Do you know every dollar bill. Fuck, I wish I had some money with me right now. I don't. But every dollar bill or every euro, whatever you have, right? There's a serial number. Well, a CBDC would have a digital serial number. And... By owning a CBDC, you know who owns it at the time, right? That particular, do you get what I'm saying? That particular dollar with that number, that CBDC with that serial number, I know Shamari owns it. Let's say Shamari owns a million dollars. Well, they know the serial numbers of every single CBDC I own. And if, if they think, oh, Shamari, he's just a dissident, he's, he's not going to learn, he's... He's misbehaving, he's a dang on miscreant. Bang, they could turn my money off. Turn those off on the system, on the CBDC system. Turn it off. Now, this is all just theory. This is all just theory. And Jay Will, he is, <laughs> he's not a conspiracy guy, but he is prone to a little bit of, you know, let me put it this way. When COVID hit, he was talking about, look, we're going to have to grow vegetables. He's one of those kind of guys. But he's not crazy. He's not stupid. It's not like, you know, he doesn't think the Illuminati are coming to get us or anything. But, you know, he did think, hey, man, we might have to grow vegetables. But anyway, that's what he told me, right? Like, the money will be programmed, right? Like, CBDC's programmable money. Right? You can program it. And so, anyway, I thought that was interesting. And so, that's why I'm reading this today. And, and it, it makes sense because do you notice that this guy, Tom Emmer... So he's our boy in, I think it's the Senate, or sorry, sorry, the House, obviously, it says the U.S. House. Tom Emmer is our boy in the House. Like, he's down for everything crypto, everything digital, everything crypto, everything Web3, everything. Like, look, let's move to the future, right? He's, he's down for the future. Let's go. We'll, we'll get there when we get there kind of thing, right? He's a guy like that. And you notice his bill is a CBDC Anti-Surveillance Act, which is what? Our brother, Justin Williams, you remember Edwin, right? In the other chat we have, right? You remember, right? He talked to us about, yeah, they'll be able to actually turn off your money on you, right? Like, you're not going to, they, they could do something where they don't have to get a search warrant. Or sorry, sorry. Yeah, a warrant to freeze your accounts. You know, like, if you do something bad, like you embezzle money from a corporation or... You do like insider trading or even drug dealing, right? Like if you're a successful drug dealer, boom, all your bank accounts get frozen, right? Yeah, but you have to go through a search warrant for that, right? And Jay Will was telling me, Justin, he was telling us, yeah, they might be able to just turn off your money. And so obviously a country like America, I, well, and here it is. This guy came out with the anti, oh, and so, sorry, sorry, sorry. And there's one more thing. The turning off the money part was the part that scared me the most. 
not scared me, but just was like, whoa, that was a wake up call. Like, whoa, I never thought of it like that. <laughs> you know, turn off your money. But the other thing about it was, but in this part, I actually don't mind, but they will know everything you spend your money on and how much money you make, right? If it's all digital, well, you can't, and you shouldn't, you can't hide your taxes anymore, right? Or you know what I mean, like make shell companies and do shit and hide your money and shit, right? Um, so that part I don't mind. I believe the the Uber, the wealthiest, you know, the 1% should pay their fair share in taxes. When a bank like Bank of America pays zero in taxes, yet that little restaurant owner down the street where I eat, he's gotta pay blah, 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 blah in taxes a year, there's something wrong there. That small business owner, he pays a whole bunch, and Bank of America pays zero. There's something wrong with that. The, it shows you where the balance of power is, <laughs> right? Um, and so Anti-Surveillance State Act. So those are the two issues, and that's why I'm going to read this right now to you guys, right? Um, this has really nothing to do with our money, but it has to do with our potential futures, okay? Our future. Like, do we want a money that they can track? I mean, they can already track our money, but they at least need a warrant to look at what we've done with our money, right? Like, they got to get a warrant. The bank's got to give them the papers and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, with the CBDC, you don't really need a warrant, do you? You could just type in someone's social. Maybe all, their, all the CBDCs tied to that social pop-up or something. Now, obviously, this is a dystopian, you know, this, this scenario that I'm giving you is a sort of dystopian possibility of the future but knock you know uh, and i'll put it this way why do you think china loves it yeah because now now xi jinping knows every penny you got and what you're doing and blah 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 blah. and if he wants beep you can just turn off your money and you fucking well know it so you'll stay in line right if you know that xi jinping might just turn your money off well you probably won't uh speak out about you know, any injustices or whatever like that. You definitely won't be asking for some democracy. So, all right, so it's kind of a thing like that. That's why I'm talking to you about this. Okay, so let's begin. The CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act mandates that any development of a digital U.S. dollar must receive explicit approval from Congress. Uh, on May 23rd, the United States House of Representatives, oh, so what he's saying is, right, like, we're not just going to let the Fed Reserve or whoever just create a CBDC that you got to ask us first. <laughs> you know, bang. You got to ask Congress first, motherfucker. Right? We're not just going to let you unleash some shit around these parts like that. Okay? <laughs> that's, the, mm. that's the street way of saying that. So, on May 23rd, uh, the United States House of Representatives... Past congressman and Majority Whip Tim Emmer's flagship legislation, H.R. 5403, the CBDC Anti-Surveillance Security Act. Bang! Bang! Oh, this color is lame. Why is it banging in red? Hold on. i got to see if I can get this thing to bang in normal colors. Why is it banging in red? And we can't get the proper, the proper bang. Shit. It doesn't let me change the color. Anyway, hold on. Let me just see something. Is it only that web page or is it all of them? Oh, bang. Oh, the blue. Okay, so it's just this web page. All right. So, look. On May 23rd, the United States Representative passed the Congressman Public Anti-Corruption Act. The bill, which was passed by a vote of 216 to 192, prohibits the Federal Reserve from issuing a central bank digital currency in the nation. Emmer claims that without the supervision of Congress, the development of a CBDC could potentially allow the federal government to monitor and control American spending habits. Now, now, uh, I don't know about, they can't control your spending habits. They can't control what you buy. They can't make you buy a Big Mac or, or, or a nine-piece bucket of chicken. But they sure dang on well can, bang, monitor it <laughs> with the CBDC. They'll monitor everything. Right, like with the CBDC, if you go cashless, how do you think you're going to get your weed, dog? Yeah, 
your weed dealer is going to have to set up a shell corporation with a point of sale device. Like all sorts of crazy. I mean, it's going to be doable. Don't worry. It'll be doable. But right? Like how do you get a prostitute? Right? I mean, I'm not a whoremonger. I'm not a whoremonger. I don't pay for sex or engage in that kind of thing. But a lot of people do. Like let's just get real. And so how do those kind of guys uh, pay for a quick blowjob in the back alley? <laughs> now I know I'm using an extreme example. But it's something I think, you know, that's kind of down to earth and you can understand, right? How do you pay for a blowjob in the back alley if everything's digital? You don't have cash to give her. I hey, blowjob, 40 bucks, 50 bucks. I don't know what the going rate is. <laughs> I don't know what the going rate is, but I'm assuming somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, you need cash to give her. I mean, I guess you could use Zelle and stuff like that, which is fine for modern day, but with CBDC, they're going to know, like, you gave that girl that money that night at 2 in the morning. <laughs> what are you giving her 50 bucks at 2 in the morning for? And they're also going to know, they're also going to see that throughout the day, she's been getting $50, $50, $50, $50, $50, right? Every blowjob she gives, you know, she gives, you know, she blows eight guys. There's going to be eight $50 transactions, which... Obviously, well, <laughs> she's obviously either a drug dealer or a prostitute because nobody just gets $50 like that, right? And so it, it will even cut down on crime. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying we should cut down on, I mean, we should cut down on crime, but I'm just saying, you know, that's the level. Like, they're going to know the dollar you're spending. Yeah, at CBDCs is different than, our money is digital now, right? But no one's tracking it. No one knows. Right? Like I said, they need a subpoena just to look at it. With a CBDC, they don't need a subpoena. They could probably type in, you know, I mean, who knows where they'll take it, but type in your social security number and just see all your transactions. Right? And if, if every three days you're giving some girl $50, $50, and then they look up her social security number, and then they see her getting $50 10 times a day, well, that's a prostitute. And they know that you're paying for prostitute services, blah, blah, blah. So do you see how these things can work? Do you see how these things are not, you know, for you people, for you crypto folk who are all privacy, privacy, privacy? Well, and just like Jay Will said, man, they can maybe even shut down your money. Okay, so but let's move on. Emmer claims that without the supervision of Congress, the potential of the, uh, sorry, the development of a CBDC could potentially allow the federal government to monitor and control spending habits. Now, you can't control spending habits, but they will monitor them. This bill was the first anti-central bank digital currency legislation uh, effort introduced in the United States, Emmer noted. For the past two Congresses, I've worked with my colleagues to update, improve, and grow support for it. This bill halts the effort of this administrative state under President Biden from issuing a financial surveillance tool that, if not done correctly, will fundamentally alter the lives of every American. And I agree. I agree with what Jay well said, and I agree with that. Um, yeah, yeah, like, I mean, I have nothing to hide. I don't have anything to hide. I don't give a fuck if you want to see that I bought a new Bluetooth speaker or a new laptop. I mean, I don't give a fuck, right? Dagon, it'll make my weed, my, you know, my weed purchases a little harder. I don't have cash, Dagon. <laughs> I'll have to move. Well, I'll have to move, obviously, to a state which condones a little marijuana usage. All right, here, not so much, but, you know. So, but you honestly see the thing, right? Like, just the, the monitoring. And now, forget about the drugs and the prostitute part. Look at just more in terms of people doing something. If you're doing something and saying something your government doesn't like, right? Could they shut you down, right? I mean, look at China, right? If you talk too much shit, Xi Jinping will disappear you. Yeah, but with the CBDC, Xi Jinping doesn't have to disappear you. Boop. He presses a button and turns off your money. That's it. That's it. Beep. You have no more money. Quick and easy, right? I mean, you know me. I'm not like a conspiracy type of guy, but I'm just showing the true possibilities in... Uh, I'm not saying that America would ever turn into like a China or something like that. Surveillance, right? You know, China's a surveillance society. 
all the cameras have AI in them and all this kind of bullshit, right? I mean, I'm not, America would never turn like that. Trust me, these rednecks with their guns, they'd rise up before, <laughs> sort of Trump supporters, they'd rise up before they allowed that to happen, right? And these pussy like Democrats, probably not so much. But, um, but I'm just saying, these are the possibilities. And so this is just a fun little Sunday show just to let you think about stuff. Just to let your mind think. All right, this is just food for thought. I'm not saying I agree. I'm not saying I disagree. It's just nice, you know, just like how Justin Williams showed me that and made me think. This is what I'm showing you to make you think. So there's no answer. Shamori, what's the answer? There is none. I'm just going to give you some stuff and you make an answer in your own head. Okay. So for the past two conjures, I've worked with my colleagues to update and improve and grow support for it. Oh, we already read this part. Notably, the CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act mandates that any development of a digital U.S. dollar must receive explicit approval from Congress. In a post on social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter, a member of the Republican Party claimed that the legislation ensures that the United States digital currency policy remains in the hands of the American people <laughs> so that any development of digital money reflects our values of privacy. So this is what I'm talking about, the values of Bang! The values of privacy. Ollie, this is horrible to bang this, but bang! There it is. Privacy. Bang! Privacy. Individual sovereignty and free market competitiveness. And so our rich friends can avoid taxes. <laughs> Let's get real. So whatever is ultimately developed must emulate the core tenets of cash. Simply put, any digital currency issued by the government, again, must be open, permissionless, and private. Right? So they want it like cash. Which is the truth. I mean, I said it before, right? Cash is the only way to make a truly private transaction. There is no such thing as privacy on the internet. None. Trust me. I used to be a hacker when I was a kid. Trust me. Trust me. The things that they can do, the things they follow. Like you think, well, I'm using a, a VPN. They won't know. If their cops are after you, they'll find you through a VPN. Right? It's just little websites don't find you because websites don't have the money and the means to like, you know, fucking make court orders and subpoena records of IP addresses and shit. Yeah, your cops do, idiot. Right? Cops, uh, VPN, like look at all the pedophiles that get arrested uh, doing that, um, the dark web kind of stuff. Yeah, well, how do you think they catch them? All those guys are, are in VPNs, Nord VPN and blah, blah, blah VPN. Yeah, fuck stick. That works if I'm trying to trick Binance into letting me open an account from America. It doesn't work if the FBI is after you for fucking looking at child porn, you fucking pervert. Right? <laughs> fucking perv. What the fuck? It doesn't work like that. And so, uh, and then and that's the thing. CBDCs, right? Imagine a country goes cashless. Well, like I said, well, you can't buy weed anymore, right? I mean, people will figure ways. Anyway, let's just move on. I'm starting to ramble now. You know, so this drink is kicking in a little bit. <laughs> Eber, me, Eber believes uh, that such measures are essential to prevent a CBDC from becoming a tool of oppression. And that's what we're talking about. So something like a China, North Korea, Russia, Iran, um, even Saudi Arabia, I mean. You know, they're our allies, but, you know, they're a little oppressive. Or any regime, any regime out there. You know, a person can talk against the regime when they have the money to do so. But if your regime turns off all your money, beep. All right, well, now you're fucked. <laughs> you can't say shit. All right, so Emmer believes that such measures are essential to prevent a CBDC from going to a tool of oppression. In his speech on the House floor, Emmer cited recent examples of government overreach and financial surveillance. The Republican cited the Canadian government's 2022 action of freezing the bank accounts of truckers protesting vaccine mandates. Emmer stressed that similar misuse of financial tools could occur in America if CBDCs are adopted without strict safeguards. It is important to note that H.R. 5403 has passed the House of Representatives and will now proceed to the Senate for consideration. So, Again, I'm not saying I agree with this bill. I'm not saying I disagree. I'm just throwing up. I'm just throwing it out here just for you to th think about yourself. What do you think about this? 
Do you think uh, CBDCs are a danger to your liberties and freedom? Do you think, ah, oh, well, fuck it. I don't do anything bad anyway. I don't give a fuck what, I, you know? What do you think? All right. Right? This is, uh, I'm not saying I agree or disagree. So massive support for the anti-CBDC bill. The bill, which boasts 165 co-sponsors and has companion legislation in the Senate. So this is what I'm talking about. So do you remember last show? And we talked about um, FIT 21, right? Was passed in the Senate. Or sorry, sorry. Passed in the House, right? And sent to the Senate. Remember? And I told you the Senate hasn't done the work yet. They've got to do work. And then you mush the bills together, right? You throw out some parts. You keep some parts. And then you get... The bill everyone votes on and it goes up to the president, right? So that's what they're saying here is that um, they already have co-companion legislation. Here it is. Co-companion legislation in the Senate. So the House is making their bill. There's already co-companion. Now they'll just combine them and add and subtract a few pieces. Uh, blah, 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 blah. All right. Alec, well, that's a crazy bunch of guys. So similarly, the U.S. Bankers Association express, expressed strong opposition to the, implementation of, to the implementation of CBDC in the United States. It's executive price, and I'm going to tell you something. All right, I'll tell you right now. Well, if you have a CBDC, right? If you have a CBDC, do you really need banks anymore? Yes. Right? If you have a CBDC... Well, it's like having crypto. You could have all your shit on your ledger. Or like say, I don't know, they'd call it something else, but right. All your money could be on your ledger, right? You don't need a bank account anymore. But it would be different, obviously. It'd be a ledger, but it would be in your name, right? So it'd be attached to your social security number and stuff. But why do I need a bank just to save money now? Right? My paycheck can go to my ledger. Right? And that ledger, you know, the government could just give you some sort of debit card connected to your ledger, and that's it. Right? You don't have a bank anymore. My paychecks come to my ledger. My, I got a debit card to the ledger. I don't need a bank. So, obviously, bankers are not happy about this. <laughs> when the American people don't need us anymore... And trust me, most of the American people don't want you motherfuckers around anyway. Well, not the way you treat us, right? Uh, right? So the ABA, the American Banking Association, expressed strong opposition to the, <laughs> to the implementation of CBDCs. It's true. right? I don't need a bank anymore. Right? Like, imagine you get paid... So this is a complete fantasy. What I'm about to tell you, you know, I've been drinking a little bit here, and so I'm going to have a little fun right now. So what, I've been what I'm about to tell you is complete fantasy, but imagine a world like this. Let me get a quick sip. The worker bee, he goes out and does his job. He's got his ledger. Bang. And, and his paychecks come to his ledger. And now when he wants a loan, fuck it, he doesn't go to a bank and beg the, the guy. He goes to a DeFi place. Bang, bang, look, look. Yeah, he gets a loan like that from the DeFi. You want a house loan? Bang. It, some sort of information has to pass through. And the DeFi thing will say whether they finance you or not. And the terms, you sign it if you like it. Right? You could digitally sign it if you like it or not. Or reject it and go to another uh, DeFi guy and try to get the loan for the house. In that transaction, from you working at your job to getting your paycheck from your job to you getting the loan for this home over here, you did not use the bank. You bypassed them. You don't need them. You don't fucking need a bank, right? So yeah, so just interesting. Just interesting. Just food for thought. Again, I'm not saying I agree with it or don't agree with it. Personally, I like to speak to customer service. I like to speak to a banker and stuff like this, but whatever, whatever. Just whatever you think. You know, I'm not 
I'm not saying bad or good. This is just a, a Sunday fun day show, you know, just give you food for thought to think about while you work, while you're at work, hard at work this week. Remember this show and remember the CBDC talk and be like, hmm, I wonder what I think about it. I give you something to think about. All right, guys, so let's wrap it up. Um, as expressed strongly, the employee of the CBDC. So its executive vice president of congressional relations and legislative affairs, Kristen Sutton, pointed out that the dollar is already digital and questioned how issuing a CBDC would enhance financial inclusion or achieve other commendable goals. Wow. It, well, CBDC wouldn't allow the rich to cheat on their taxes. <laughs> That's Gary L. And, uh, you know, I think it would help crime go down. But I'm not saying good or bad, good or bad. Just it's up to you guys. So, bang, there's the news. There's just a little something about House Emmer's CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act. And like I said, uh, Justin, he, you know, he's a computer programmer and he showed me the whole vibe of, yeah, they could turn your money off maybe if they design it that way and like, whoa. So that block up kind of flags for me, but I'm not saying bad or good. I just, I'm bringing it out here for you guys all to just think about it. What do you think? What do you think? And in fact, tell us what you think. Put it in the comments. What do you think about CBDCs? All right. Um, obviously the Chinese implementation is for surveillance, but do you think your country would surveil you? Right? Just whatever. Just food for thought. Food for thought. Okay, guys? Love you guys. All right. Let's get to the shout outs and let's get out of here real quick. This is a quick show. This is a quick show. Whoa. What's this now? All right. Ed Rapa. Suitable. Bitch. Bang. 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 Holding the chicken. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Yes. So I just talked to you the other day. So there's nothing to talk about yet. <laughs> no new, no new yap yap. So I'll leave it at that, brother. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Look, look. Is that the Vercheta? The Enforcer. Yes. Whoop, whoop. Settle down. Where's he going? Vercheta, where are you going? Vercheta, come back, bro. Where is he going? All right, man. Well, fuck him. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Not fuck him. I don't mean fuck him, but I mean, you know, I want people to see the. The thing. Anyway, whatever, man. Bang. Love you, brother. You know that. He's the enforcer. Grunchable, Grunchable. Holding down. Or, sorry. <laughs> oh, hold on. Grunchable doesn't hold down. Why isn't it? Look at how the bangs aren't staying on. Right? All right. I'm just going to. I'm going to bang everyone like this then. Fuck it. Grunchable, Grunchable. Follow one course until success. Stay calm. Yes, brother. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. So, brother Grunchable. Harabi Hardaway from the multiverse. Now, we talked about what Harabi did. Thanks to him, we got the uh, we got the House uh, FIT 21 law passed last week. You all know how Robbie do. You all know how Robbie be. And dang on it. It's been years watching. We all know how Robbie gets down. He hands out that sour diesel and gets her done. Robbie Hardaway, love you brother, see you brother. Bang, my multiverse, multiverse. And he's holding the chicken with a serious face. And I'm telling you right now, Robbie's been here holding that chicken for a long time. He's more serious than ever. <laughs> He's more serious than ever now. Oh, yeah, you thought he was serious a few years ago? Fuck, dog. The seriousness revs up. All right. DP Entertainment. Look, look. Oh, his stayed. Nice. Soul brother. Yes, my soul brother. Love you for the zebra, though. Bang. Yes. All right. Oh, look at Edwin. Look, look, crazy Edwin. The original, the official exclusive. Then that's the thing, the exclusive. There will never be another mascot of CB News. There will never be another original of CB News. If, if Edwin were to die today, and look, we, we're not asking for that. We're not asking for that. But I'm saying if he were to leave us today for some reason, there would never be a mascot again. No one would be worthy to hold that position again after our brother Edwin. Nobody. No one's worthy. We're not worthy. We're dying on right you're not worthy. So settle down. But Edwin is. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang! The original Shih Tzu Master. Bang! The original. Bang! Crazy Edwin, baby. Love you, brother. Bang! That's it, baby. Edwin, baby. If you don't know about Edwin, you just don't know. 
<laughs> Victor. Oh, man. Victor, Victor. Love your brother. See your brother. He is the chicken. Bang. Look, if you're new to this channel, let me tell you something. Sometimes in life you get the chicken. Yeah. Sometimes you only get the feathers. Look, our brother's here on this channel. Well, we don't fuck around with anything but straight chicken. Oh, yeah. Hollywood. Holy, look at the bang he gave me. <laughs> He loved that last show. Look, look, this is our brother from a long, 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 long time. 2018 days. Pollywood. They're not letting your thing stay, Pollywood. Hold on, man. You changed your thing again? Your profile picture. There it is. Pollywood. What's the picture of? Oh, is that like some big titted girl? Oh, some nice tits and some look, look. All right. All right, Pollywood. Give us a show, brother. <laughs> love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. We all love you, brother. Bang. Yes, he's been with us from the get as well. Technically bullish. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Look, look. He's been him. Look, look. Truffle pig. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Yes. He finds the chicken. He finds the chicken. You know, sometimes you go out in the woods and the chickens are hiding. He goes and finds them. Oh, yeah, he finds them dang on chickens. Look, look. Wait, dang on. Settle down, Mr. Throat. Settle down, brother. Look, look, Universal Mr. Throat. Look, brother, see, brother. Bang, holding down our insurgency in Central Europe. Yes. Holding down our insurgency. Strong. Pit master. Head of security, all of it. Look, look. Bang, love your brother, see, brother. Bang, and get better soon. Well, you're already getting better, but so now I'm giving a little extra energy to you. Extra get better energy. I'm going to give you some get better energy. Bang, there you go. That'll help you out getting better faster. Yes, that's a scientific thing I just did. Trust me. <laughs> love your brother, see, brother. Bang, get better energy. Bang, bang. All right, there we go. Yes, I sent him some get better energy juice. Some energy power. Oh, I don't know who the fuck this is. All right, so that's enough. All right, that's enough. Let's get back. To, you know how we do. Let's get back to the Death Star. Let's get back to the Death Star now. That's enough. Bye. Welcome back, everybody. All right, guys. So we had a great show for you today. Oh, yeah. And take the energy. Yeah. Right, like, yeah. Misanthrope. Take it. Oh, yeah. Power. But I gave him some of my power. I'll go to sleep tonight and I'll, I'll regain my power, my strength. So I gave him a little extra that I had. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Settle down, everybody. All right, let's go over the show and let's move on. So Polygon, uh, D-Pin coordinator. <laughs> so look, man, I didn't really understand uh, that whole, uh, I'm not going to bullshit you. That was some straight nerd talk, but they're doing some D-Pin vibes and it's going to allow for the deep pins. I mean, I understood a little. I shouldn't exaggerate. It's not like I'm completely ignorant. They're going to allow the deep pin uh, to communicate over different um, uh, chains and networks and stuff. And so that's great. That's why it's called the coordinator, right? It's going to coordinate amongst the networks. And so that's cool. kind of like a chain link. I mean, chain link is different. Chain link brings this is for deep pin stuff. Right, I think that's digi de de decentralized physical something something. I don't know. I don't remember what the other rest is, but it's good. It's for the future. It's for Web3. Bang! Good stuff. Now, this is the favorite. Grayscale. Grayscale makes new trusts near and stacks, and that's the vibe. We need investment vehicles made out of um, altcoins now. We need altcoin investment vehicles. Uh, you know, your V-Chain, your, your Singularity Nets, your, uh, your IOTAs, your Stellars, your uh, Polygons, your Matics, or oh, that's the same there. Um, you know, all of it, all of them, all right? And so that's what's great. Now, Grayscale is obviously pushing the envelope here. Um, they're just gonna do it. Remember, I said it's better to it's better to what it's better to ask. Oh, that's what the saying says. Right, 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 right. This is how the saying goes. It's better to ask forgiveness than permission. 
<laughs> right. Just do something. And if they you get in trouble, ask for forgiveness. But don't ask for permission because they might say no. So just do it anyway. So it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. That's the saying that I was trying to tell you guys on that. And so that's what Grayscale is doing. They're not asking permission. They're just going to build this shit. <laughs> bang! Oh, bang! Oh, bang! They're just going to build it gangster-like. And if they get in trouble, well, they'll ask for forgiveness. <laughs> oh, we're sorry. We, we didn't know we were in it. Remember, I told you guys. I live my life in the gray area of the world, right? Uh, I'm not a goody two-shoes. I'm not naive. I'm not an idiot. But I'm also not just some gangster thug-ass fucking killer motherfucker. I live in the gray area. I live in the world of, Your Honor, look, I didn't know I couldn't do that, right? I, that's the world I live in, in the, I didn't know I couldn't do that world. And so that's what Grayscale is doing here. Um... They're not asking permission, and if they have to, well, fuck it. They'll ask for forgiveness. Oh, Your Honor, we didn't know. Uh, we're sorry. <laughs> Forgive us. Right? And judges don't mind that. So, right? That's the world you, you should live in. I encourage that to everyone. Don't be a pussy. Don't be a goody two-shoes following every rule and everything because people will eat you alive. But also, just don't get full gangster because you will go to prison. And, well, well, that's the end of your whole life. So live in that gray area, right? There's a gray area in the world where it's not exactly goody two-shoes, or sorry, it's not exactly illegal. It's not goody two-shoes, but it's, well, a little something in the middle. And if you do get in trouble, well, look, Your Honor, I didn't know I couldn't do that. I wasn't trying to be malicious. I wasn't trying to flout the law. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Uh, obviously, now that I know this, Your Honor, I will completely cease and desist this behavior um i'm ashamed i'm uh i'm 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 uh, remorseful uh please have mercy on me right that's the world you got to live in then yeah, judges will be like all right dog all right just don't do that again right that's the world you want to live in all right dog just don't do that again maybe pay a little fine pay a couple grand just because you've been naughty right slap on the wrist you've been a little naughty i'm gonna have to charge you a couple grand but all right dog get out of here <laughs> that's the world you want to live in folks trust me trust me trust me you don't want to live in a world where the judge is just going to throw a book at you raw you fucking murdering criminal murdered fucking stick asshole bad person bang yeah well that's when you're doing serious time but in life you don't want to be a pussy you know you don't still want to be following every rule everything because motherfuckers will take advantage of you you know there's there's vicious people out there with a contract signing, bang, next thing they have your home. What the hell will you sign the contract? There's evil people out there trying to get your money and get your properties. So you gotta be cool. So but you gotta so you gotta be in the, the middle. You know? So if you get in trouble for something, wow. And obviously when you're in the middle too, bad people won't fuck with you because they know that you know about the fuckery. Like, nice try, fuck stick. Or, hey, sign this paper, Shamari. Ha, <laughs> nice try, asshole. Look, I know about what you're trying to do here with your blah, 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 blah. And they're like, oh, busted, okay. And then they fuck off, right? So don't be a pussy. Don't be a fucking criminal. Just be in the gray area. Okay. Oh, how did we get the... <laughs> oh, and that's what Grayscale's doing, right? That's what Grayscale's up to. They're just going to unleash these. Remember this. It's better to ask forgiveness than permission. Remember that. It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. And so that's what they're doing. They're coming up with these new trusts for near and stacks. They hope they work. Uh, they hope they're not <laughs> brought to court over them. And if so, you know, they'll just say, oh, we're sorry, Your Honor. And they'll just close them down and that'll be that, right? But it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. All right. Back. And then finally, the last thing. The House passes the CBDC Anti-Surveillance Act and... Well, I used the, the thing of what our brother Justin Williams told us way back. This guy schooled me way back. He's a professional programmer, right? So he schooled me. You know, and he was like, look, Shamari, these motherfuckers could turn off your money. Right? If shit's too deep, they could turn off your money. So if they don't like what you're saying, what you're doing, all of a sudden you have no money. I was like, drag on. Yeah, no, no, you know. I mean, obviously, if we can set up a system where they'd at least have to get a search warrant or at least some sort of 
warrant to turn off your money. But, but the point being is just who knows how it's going to work in either co- in every country, right? Like here in America, I'm pretty sure, yeah, these rednecks, you know, they're not going to allow your money to get turned off. Trust me. But but then again, they're a bunch of weak people, so <laughs> we know. We know who knows who knows. But you know, like in a place like China. Right, that's why they already have the digit you on. That's why they have the CBDC renminbi. Trust me, I know that's what Xi Jinping's up to. You fuck around, you'll just turn off your money. Yeah, I don't even ha- I don't even have to arrest you anymore. I just turn off your money and give you nowhere to go to to rectify that situation. Right? If I'm the, if I'm Xi Jinping and I turn off if I so here's Lady X, right? Her name's Lady X and she's talking shit about me. Xi Jinping, or, or I'm Shamari, but, but forget it. Let's just go with Xi Jinping. I'm Xi Jinping, and she's like, Xi, you're an asshole. You're a motherfucker. She's an asshole. She's a motherfucker. Everybody, let's go again. She, and I just go, all right, I'm turning off her money. Yeah, well, now how does she live? She can't eat. She can't pay rent. Others would have to uh, sustain her, right? And so multiply that by millions, like if you're against Xi Jinping or something. So just look at the implications in terms of if you're under a regime. Yeah, just take a look at those implications. And that's why I brought that, that one up, the house CBDC stuff, just, just for you to think for yourself. Like, just what do you think, right? I'm not, there's no answer. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, to any of that. I'm just... But it is, and so the reason I brought it up because it got me thinking. So I'm hoping by bringing it up to you, it'll get you thinking. And just, oh, thinking is good. All right. So on that note, let's chill it and kill it. Bang! Let's get you back to your wives and lives. Look, subscribe below and press the bell. You'll get an automatic notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. (laughs) Greatest show. (laughs) Still in the multiverse. Bang! My name is Shamar Clark, and I love talking money. Bang! And I love talking crypto. Bang! This is the favorite time of my day. So look, thank you for having me in your home. And I'll see you all next time for another fun fact, fact-filled day of crypto talk. But until then, subscribe here and press the bell and press the thumbs up for the like. Watch that video there and get your mind right. And I'll see you all next time. Look, look, my name is Shamar Clark, always watching our money. And I'm always on duty. Luckily for you, I'm always on duty. It's Shamar Clark. Bye. Love you guys. Yes. Over and out.